Hello students, this video uh, is created for you so that uh, uh, it can be helpful for you to appear in the interview. The content of this video mostly related with C++ concepts because there for any uh, technology background uh, company uh, in computer science uh, area uh, always ask uh, various uh, technology related questions which are related to uh, programming concepts and uh, basically three programming languages are mostly asked about those are basically C, C++ and Java. Also nowadays uh, Python also included in their questionaries. Uh, other topics will be also um, covered in, in different videos by other faculty members. So here in this uh, video, uh, myself uh, Rup Kumar Deka will try to give you uh, a brief um, overview of the uh, C++ related questions and answers. Uh, I have uh, uh, um, created uh, a material uh, containing only questions and answers. These questions and answers I have um, collected from the internet which are uh, mostly asked in those type of interviews um, like uh, Capgemini, TCS, or like uh, it might be uh, Jaloni, also it might be uh, other like Wipro, also uh, you, you can find these type of questions. So I will just uh, go through basic contents and basic uh, overview of the C. So uh, if you find any difficulty to understand, uh, please contact me uh, whenever you uh, have the time and want to understand uh, the things that I am going to discuss in a better way. So first here you can see uh, we'll go to first few basic questions then we'll go more about the topics knowledge. Uh, here you can see First question is that uh, briefly explain the concept of inheritance in C++. Uh, if you uh, if you are asked this type of question, so you, you might answer in this way also in a different way. But the basic idea of inheritance is that uh, when C++ allows classes to inherit some of the commonly used states and behavior from other classes it is known as inheritance so what it means is like that suppose one class a uh, wants to use some functions and data from another class b uh, because uh, c++ is uh, we know that is a class oriented uh, programming language so one class or one class A can inherit the property. Property means the functions and the variables can inherit or can use whichever data or whichever functions are used in B and A can inherit it. And to establish or to implement that idea of uh, this sharing or the accessing the, those um, functions and data from other classes is commonly called as inheritance because A is inheriting the properties or you can say states or you can say behaviors or you can say data of B. Next question is that what is or define C++ so C++ could be defined as a 
computer programming language that is a superset of C wherein additional features are made in the C language so actually the backbone of the C++ language is actually the C language and that is why we can say that C++ is a superset of C language and whatever the additional features are used in C++ those uh, in the uh, lower layer those are created by using C languages so that is the basic idea of C++ and next question is that can we call C++ as OOPS, OOPS means object oriented programming system and why so obviously uh, C++ can be called as object oriented programming language or system because it provides that concept of object and class and using the object and class relationship we can apply different um, characteristics fundamental characteristics of object oriented programming those are like data hiding uh, polymorphism inheritance and various others so these are the main basic uh, property uh, of any kind of object oriented programming language or system and C++ attains this type of property so that is why we can call C++ as an object oriented programming language or we can say system uh, one another question here you can see what is the function of the keyword volatile so uh, you might not heard about this function but if you go through internet you can find more uh, information about this so here only a basic idea is given so volatile is a function that is used to declare whether a particular a variable is volatile and therefore directs the compiler to change the variable externally so whenever you create any function and you named it as a volatile uh, declare whether a particular variable is volatile and thereby it uh, directs the compiler uh, compiler of the computer to change the variable means we can change that variable externally so this way helps in avoiding a computer opti compiler optimization on the variable reference means volatile means uh, the value of that um, function will change uh, uh, or the reference might got change so that is why uh, if we do not make it as a volatile it will create problem during the compiler optimization process so why by making it as a volatile function or naming it as a volatile function uh, we can avoid the compiler optimization during the variable reference time another question that is define stories class in c++ and name some uh, you can you might be heard about uh, dif different storage class in C also similar concept is here also a storage class in C++ specifically resembles that of life or even the scope of symbols including the variables functions etc uh, so what storage class defines or specifically resembles that of life or we can say or we can say the span of life or you can say span of existence uh, or even the scope of the symbol means where that symbol can be used uh, within the function or within the class or something like that uh, not only symbols including different variables including different functions so that storage class can define that uh, in C++ some of the storage class in C++ are mutable auto static extern register etc so you might uh, relate these names with uh, c 
storage class. Again, another question that is explain this pointer. So, in case of C++, uh, this type of that uh, coin, this pointer is used uh, a constant pointer that holds the memory address of the current object. And this pointer you can uh, visualize, visualize like this arrow also or you can say this also. So this, this pointer, this, this pointer could be referred to as a constant pointer that holds a memory address of the current object, means the current object that is called. So it passed off as hidden argument to all the non-static member function calls and is available as a local variable within the body of all the non-static functions. So this address or the value it contains it is passed off means that will that message will be passed off as a hidden argument means that will not be uh, explicit, explicitly argument that will not be made explicit in the argument form but it will be hidden for the all non-static member function means whatever the member functions it has for that class uh, that address or that reference will be passed and is available as a local variable so it is available this this pointer is available as a local variable within the body of all the non-static functions and we know that the static uh, member functions can be called even without any object that is with the class name which is why the this pointer is not available for them so this this pointer is used for non-static member functions because for the static member functions without uh, uh, using any object we can call those static member functions that is with the class name itself we can call those static member functions but in case of non-static member functions uh, we can use this pointer which is why the this pointer is not available for those static member functions next important question uh, uh, point or question we are going through that is why do you need uh, the frame class and function frame class or frame functions to different point so we'll go more about these two point in later part so here you can see at times there is a need for allowing a particular class to access the private or protected members of a class and to do so we make use of a frame class so here try to understand this statement at different times there is a need for allowing a particular class to access private or protected protected members of a class and to do so we make use of a frame class so if we use this frame class uh, notations between two uh, classes then we can access the private and protected protected members or you can say protected functions or data in between those two classes so without making any frame concept we cannot actually use or access the private or protected members of any other class so that is capable of accessing the protected as well as the private members of the class in which it is declared as a friend so a friend function on the other hand can access private and protected class members so it could either be a global function or a method of some class so that is first part is about making a class friend another part here is the making a function as a friend so when you make a function as a friend in that case the private and protected data can be uh, accessed within that class member but 
you can we can use some functions as a frame for a global use so which is called as global function or a method of some class so if we make any function uh, of any class as a frame and as a global then those global function means those functions can be used for any other class those uh, um, private or protected datas or members or functions can be used for by any other class so that is global concept we'll go more about this in later part now again we are going through few more uh, basic topics uh, that is like what are the main concepts of object oriented programming means what are the main part of object oriented programming so object oriented programming or oops refer to language that uses objects in the programming and the main aim of uh, op is to bind together the data and the functions that operate on them so that no other part of the code can access the data except the function which is actually the data hiding concept or data encryption concept so that is the main part so other main concepts of op are polymorphism inheritance encapsulation and abstraction so these are very very important part of object oriented programming so in the interview also any question might come from these four points that is about polymorphism inheritance encapsulation and abstractions because that is the main goal of or main idea of object oriented programming language so whether it is c++ or java they are trying to address these concepts so uh, if you go through this concept then you can be able to answer any question related to uh, c++ or java uh, so next question is that what are the classes and objects these are basic questions so classes and objects are to measure aspects of object oriented programming so class is user defined blueprint or you can say prototype from which objects are created so it is nothing but like a suppose if you want to create a class of human then the properties of the human will be the functions and the and the, the height and weight and other things uh, will be the data and variables and the functions that the human do can be called are uh, uh, called as those functions so that human being is a class or you can say prototype and we the any hum, any any person can be an object for that class so if you call that object it will carry those properties of a uh, human being so it represents a set of properties or methods that are common to all objects so that human being class will be common to all other person so that is the concept of class an object is an identifiable entity with some characteristics and behavior so object is nothing but an identifiable entity with some characteristics and behavior an object is an instance of a class means it is just a uh, instance or you can say sample of a class so when a class is defined no memory is allocated but when it is instan instantiated memory is allocated so whenever during a programming scenario if you define a class in that time no memory is allocated to that class but when you create any object or instantiated any object then only memory will be allocated for that class next important part question is that what are different type of inheritance so there are these the, these are different types of inheritance like single inheritance multiple inheritance multi level inheritance hierarchical inheritance hybrid inheritance so these are the types of inheritance we can get in c++ also in 
might be in Java also. So in case of uh, inheritance in C++, what is it about? The capability of a class to derive the properties and characteristics from another class is called inheritance. Suppose uh, there is a class of four wheeler and there is a class of three wheeler but there are some properties which can be inherited by the three wheeler class from the four wheeler class or you can say four wheeler class can inherit some property from three wheeler class so those inheritance properties means some functions or some characteristics or you can say some data or some variables can be inherited from another class and that process or to execute that process of using or accessing uh, private or protected data from another class can be called as inheritance. So inheritance is one of the most important features of OOP. The class that inheritance properties from another class is called subclass or, or you can say derived class. So basically we can visualize it like this way. Suppose one class B which inherits some properties from another class. So that class B is called as subclass or derived class. Another class which provides those information or provides those properties or data or functions or variables which will be inherited by B that suppose is A and that A can be called as super class or you can say base class. So base class A will give the property to B or you can say B will inherit the property of A. So why and when to use inheritance or what are the modes of inheritance or what are the types of inheritance and why and why uh, when to use the inheritance. So we'll go through that point now. So consider here again see you can see some example discussion, discussion is here in this uh, content. Consider a group of vehicles you need to create classes for bus, car and truck. The methods are like suppose method means the functions are like fuel amount, capacity, apply brakes will be the same for all these three classes. So if we create this class avoiding the inheritance then we have to write all these functions in each of the three classes. So that is the uh, problem or that is the uh, redundancy we need to create if we don't make something common. So So here you can see class of bus, class of car, class of truck and all these three classes have something common like fuel amount, capacity, applied brakes. So those are the functions that suppose these are few things that those are common. So you can clearly see that above process results in duplication of some code three times. So this increases the chance of error and data redundancy. So to avoid this type of situation inheritance is used. So if we create a class suppose vehicle and write these common functions in it and inherit these uh, functions in the rest of the classes whenever required from the vehicle class then we can simply avoid the duplication of data and also we can increase the reusability. So that is one major point here you can say reusability code reusability which is mostly used in case of Zabha also in case of C++ also and that is why C++ or Zabha is one of the major programming languages. So now we can see how it can be done. Here you can see class vehicle is created having those three common functions like fuel amount capacity and apply brakes are included in that function in the class and those uh, data will be inherited from the class vehicle by this um, uh, derived class like class of bus, class of car and class of truck 
those derived class we use the base class uh, to uh, so that they can access those uh, functions uh, for their use so using inheritance we have to write the functions only one time instead of three times as we have inherited the rest of the three classes from the base class vehicle so thus we can implement the inheritance in c++ so for creating a subclass which is inherited from base class we have to uh, follow the below syntax that is this one uh, class subclass name so this is just the name of the class access mode means it is a private mode or uh, public mode or protected mode depending upon that the things will be different uh, 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 and also the base class name and body of the subclass subclass means derived class and base class is the super class so here subclass name is the name of the subclass access mode is the mode in which you want to inherit the subclass for example public private etc and base class name is the name of the base class from which you want to inherit the subclass note a derived class does not inherit access to private data members however so try to understand this point is very important a derived class does not inherit access means it cannot access or inherit that access property to the private data members of that base class however it does inherit a full patent object so it can derive a full patent object or full parent object which contains any private members which that class declares so using that object we can access those values of data members but we cannot directly access the data members so using that object of the base class we can use the values of the private data members or private functions so here some code is given to implement this above concept here you can see base class is class of parent suppose public int ibp another subclass inheriting from base class parent that is class style and public parent means public data of the parent will be accessed uh, public uh, in the ibc again in the main function when you create the child object one so an object of class style which is the derived class has all the data members and the member function of class parent because it can access the public part of the parent that is i int idp int idc so all these variables will have for that object of style class so object 1.idc equal to 7 suppose and object 1.idp is 91 suppose and thus we can display the result of those values of this variable using that object so we can call those variables using that object of the parent class as well as the uh, child class so in the above program we can see that child class is publicly inherited from the parent class uh, so the public data members of the class parent will be also be inherited by the class child so there are various modes of inheritance uh, uh, we have gone through one that is public mode but there may be protected mode also so public mode is if we uh, derive a subclass from a public base class then the public member of the base public member of the base class will become public in the derived class and protected members of the base class will become protected in the derived class so it will not alter anything the public member of the base class will become public in the derived class and the project members of the base class will become protected in the derived class and also in case of protected mode if we derive a subclass from a protected base class then both public member and the protected member of the base class will become protected in derived class so whatever the public member functions or public variables are declared in in the base class will become the protected in the derived class in case of protected mode in case of private mode if we derive a subclass from a private base class 
the then both public member and the protected members of the base class will become private and derived private in derived so if you make it private then all the public and protected members of the base class will become private but the private members in the base class cannot be directly accessed in the derived class there is no mode to do that so while protected members can be directly accessed for example classes b and c and d call contain the variable x y z in the below example so we'll see that here you can see class a so here you can see this is the table so when you make uh, the base class member access specifier as public for any variable and if you make the inheritance mode is public then you can the variable will be public in the derived class and if you make it protected but it is public in the base class then in the derived class it will become protected and if you make it private for the public variables then it will become private but the private variables of the base class cannot be accessed in any mode so that is the main point of this whole discussion of um, different type of mode of inheritance now we'll go to different types of inheritance so we have gone through the names previously now we'll go through in more detail so here you can see the first one that is single inheritance means one single class is using or inheriting the properties of class a so this is a simple syntax this is a simple idea of inheritance only one class is accessing the data or the members of class a accessible members of class a second concept is a multiple inheritance in case of multiple inheritance there there here you can see the class a that is one derived class which can access from different base classes so that process or that syntax is like this class subclass name is derived class name and the access mode from base class 1 and the access mode and the base class 2 so there are be multiple of um, multiple classes not only two so which can be uh, used in case of inheriting inheriting the property uh, by a from those classes so this is the scenario of multiple inheritance next one is multi-level inheritance so in case of multi-level inheritance here you can see class c is a base class then class b is another base class but class b is inheriting some property of class c and again class a is the ultimate derived class which will derive some property of class b but already class b is inheriting some property of class c so in that scenario class a will automatically can derive or inherit some properties of class c because class b has already taken that inheritance property or inheritance process uh, or inheriting some data members from class c and that is why class a via class b can inherit some data from class c so that is a multi-level inheritance there is a difference between multiple and multi-level multi-level means there are there will be level of uh, base class and derived class another one is hierarchical inheritance so from um, the concept of multi-level and multiple and the single inheritance we can visualize this hierarchical inheritance in this diagram where class a class is class c are uh, like uh, accessing or inheriting properties of class b and again class b is inheriting property of class z here also class d and class f is inheriting are inheriting class properties of class e and again class e is inheriting the property of class z so that is the uh, hierarchical inheritance and there is another one that is hybrid or 
virtual inheritance where there might be a mixture of uh, hierarchical along with single or multiple type of concept so combining uh, hierarchical inheritance and multiple inheritance we can get this type of hybrid inheritance concept so this is all about inheritance in C++ or you can say object oriented programming next we'll go to another question that is differentiate between function overloading and function overriding so we'll go through that now function overloading provides multiple definitions of the function by sensing signatures or you can say pattern or the definition so sensing the number of parameters or you can say arguments or you can say sensing the data type of parameters or you can say return type does not play any roles whereas function overriding is the, the pre-definition of base class function in its derived class with same signature that is return type and parameters so we'll go through more about this differentiation now first simply a class without an object requires no space allocated to it the space so <coughs> uh, inheritance in case of inheritance overriding of function occurs when one class is inherited from another class and overriding can occur without inheritance so function signature uh, like overloaded function must differ in the function signature that is either number of parameters or types of parameters should differ but in case of overriding function signature must be same uh, scope of functions overridden functions are in different scopes mean different class so the scopes are also different but in case of overloading the function scopes are same means those can should be in the same class and behavior of the function overriding is needed when derived class function has to do some added or different job than the base class functions so some functions which are in the base class or some uh, same function is in the derived class but both are doing different job in both classes then this overriding concept is needed but in case of overloading is used uh, to have same name functions inside the same class which will behave differently depending upon the parameters or types of parameters are passed to them and basically uh, function overloading is a compile time uh, compile time process or concept and function overriding is a uh, can be achieved in the runtime so it is a definition of base class function in a, it is a derived class it's derived class with the same signature means same property of that functions but uh, scope of those functions are different and that is the return type and parameters so it can be uh, only be done in the derived class so we can override that uh, signature or types of the derived class in the derived class so that is the point of overloading and overriding in a brief way so here is another simple concept that is uh, simply a class without an object requires no space allocated to it so whenever you define any class so if you are not creating any object then no space will be allocated to it the space is allocated when the class is instantiated so to an object of so to an object of empty class one byte is allocated by the compiler for its unique address identification so if a class have multiple objects then they can have different unique memory location suppose if a class does not have any size then what would be stored on the memory location that's the reason when we create an object of an empty class in c++ program it needs some memory to get stored and the minimum minimum amount of memory that can be reserved is one byte hence if we create multiple objects of m of an empty class every object will have unique address only because that class is already empty so there will be no uh, more memory allocation other than one byte so here we can see 
some concepts of overloading and overriding through some programming syntax so here you can see uh, few functions which are going to be overloaded like void taste void taste same name same signature but the parameters are different int float and double uh, int and float double arguments so here again if, if you call those functions here int main uh, int a equal to 5 float b equal to 5.5 and then if you call test that is a class uh, that is the function name test a test b that's a comma b return 0 so here this uh, definition of this, those function is void test that is method 1 uh, simple integer number and again method 2 that is void test having the float variable uh, because here there are three types of uh, parameters are passed uh, one is single parameter which is an integer and it is um, and next is b is a float type parameter and here is int and float both are mixed but the name of the function is same so, so here we are overloading it having the same function name we are using it for different purposes so three different methods are given here so in the output uh, it will give this output uh, so without creating any class this program has shown so through using some using some uh, class also we can do that but that overloading will only reside or will only affect in one class but overriding will affect come to an effect between inheriting property or between two classes so here you can suppose another example of overriding where class is the base class having some um, functions like display and so and another derived class that is using the public values of base class this is a public values of base class so again public overriding method new working so that display will be used here so the display is same here in the base class also but the things that we are going to um, display here will be this not this so that is the overriding concept so when you call the objects here using the class name derived class dr and the base class at the rate ds equal to dr so address of ds uh, address of dr will be stored in this address pointer and when you call ds the display and when you call dr dot so so how it will give output output will be this is display method of derived class so display method of derived class means from this display method of derived class though we are using bs bs is the call or the object of this base class but we are using the dr as a address of bs equal to dr so thus we are overriding it while running time so bs the display the object is from base class and display that same function is here also in the base class also but it is showing only the values from the derived class so thus we are overriding the function display which is already in the base class but we are showing from this derived class so that is the process we are overriding it and again when you call dr.so what will happen so here you can see this is so method from base class though the dr is from derived class we can use that object to call the function of the base class because already we are inheriting the uh, inheriting the members of the base class using inheritance concept so dr can call the variable or the function variable from the base class also so that is why it is showing this or it is accessing this part of the base class another important point in case of c++ that is access modifiers we have already gone through some ideas about access modifiers through inheritance but in basic uh, the basic idea of access modifiers can be discussed like this so access modifier used, in, used to implement an important abstract 
aspect of object-oriented programming that is data hiding or we can say data encapsulation. Uh, so suppose uh, uh, consider a real life example the research and analysis wing or you can say raw having 10 crore members has some uh, has come in position of sensitive confidential information regarding the national security so suppose now we can correlate these core members uh, 10 core members um, uh, to data members means variables and the mem or you can say member functions of a class this 10 people or 10 core member can be related to as a variable or you can or you can relate to as a functions or data member or you can say data variable or you can say member function we can correlate this 10 member like that of a class which in turn can be correlated to the ra wing so these 10 members can directly access confidential information from their wing. Wing means that is the class raw wing. They can directly access those confidential information, the class. But anyone apart from these 10 members, so anyone apart from these 10 members cannot access this information directly. That is outside functions other than those relevant in the class itself cannot access the information that is not entitled to them without having either assigned privilege means someone has to give privilege to access those information otherwise uh, other than the, those 10 members cannot access confidential information of raw class so such as those possessed by frame class so by making frame concept or by making inheritance concept there will be some provision to access those files of raw but without using any concept we cannot or nobody can access the confidential part or the files of raw other than those 10 core members so that is the concept of data hiding So this is, this is what data hiding is in practice. So in the using OOP, we can establish this practice. Access modifier or access specifier in a class are used to assign the accessibility to the class members. That is, it sets some restrictions on the class members not to get directly accessed by the outside functions. There are basically three types of access modifiers available in C++, that is public, private and protected. So if we do not specify any access modifiers for the members inside a class, then by default, the access modifier for the members will be private. If you do not mention anything, then it will be by default make it will be as private. But to make it public or to make it protected, you have to mention it. So let us know and look at each one of these access modifiers in details. So first public, so if you make the data members or variables as public, all the class members declared under public specifier will be available to everyone. Anyone, uh, any, any, anyone can access this data. The data members and the member functions declared as public can be accessed by other classes and functions too. The public members of a class can be accessed from anywhere in the program using the direct member function operator that is dot with the object of the class. And if you make it private, this members declared, this class member declared as private, the class member declared as private can be accessed only by the member functions inside the class. They are not allowed to be accessed directly by any object or functions outside the class. Only the member functions or the friend functions are allowed to access the private member of the class. Next one is that protected. Protected access modifier is similar to private access modifier in the sense that it cannot be accessed outside of its class unless with the help of friend class. So by making or by using the friend concept, 
we can access the protected part of the class or you can say protected uh, the members or protected variables again i am repeating protected access modifier is similar to private access modifier in the sense that it cannot be accessed outside of its class unless with the help of friend class the difference is that the class member declared as protected can be accessed by any subclass of that class as well means uh, the protected data members can be accessed in inheritance concept that we have discussed already this access through uh, inheritance can alter the access modifier of the elements of the base class in derived class depending upon the models of inheritance that is what we have this we are discussing about data hiding which is a very important features in case of c plus plus next important part that is about friend class and friend function a friend class can access private and protected members of other class in which it is declared as friend so we need to declare that friend term uh, in a class then only we can access the private and protected member of that other class so it is sometimes useful to allow particular class to access private members of the other class for example suppose linked list class may be allowed to access private members of a node so we'll go through that example friend function is like because that is a friend class friend function is like friend class but a friend function can be given a special grant to access private and protect members similar concept of like friend class but the application will be different we'll go through that and friend function can be a member of another class or it can be a global function so class node like suppose here you can see class node private these are the private part of that class uh, again you are making friend int link list source so other members of node class other members of node class these are another member so only source of the link list can access the inter members so this source function of the link list class now can access these private parts of this node class so thus we are making this function a friend function or we are making this class as a friend class following are some important points about friend function classes uh, friends should be used only for limited purpose too many things functions or external classes are declared as friends of a class with, uh, with protected or private data it lessens the value of encapsulation so we try to avoid that main number of using the friend concept we try to restrict for few using of the friend class or friend concept friendship is not mutual so what that means if class a is a friend of class b then b does not become a friend of a automatically and friendship is not inherited means we cannot inherit that concept of friendship from one base class to another direct class the concept of friend is not dear in java which is a major difference between c++ and java another important part uh, of c++ is constructor and destructor which is used in c++ so a constructor is a member function of a class that has the same name as the class thing so constructor is nothing but a member function of a class and the name of the member function is the same like the class name so it helps to initialize the object of a class so while you are defining the member function having the same name as the class name so while defining it we are initializing the object of a class so without calling any object also we can instantiate the object thus we are giving or allocating some memories to the main class so it can either accept the arguments or not so we, we can include some arguments 
or may not be also in that member function it is up to you it is used to allocate a memory to an object of the class so that is the main idea or main purpose of creating the constructor so it is called whenever an instance of a class is created so it is called whenever an instance of the class is created so whenever you instantiate any object or whenever you uh, the class is when instantiated this constructor is created so by default that constructor is also created so it can be defined manually with arguments or without arguments so there can be many constructor in class it can be overloaded but it cannot be inherited or virtual so try to understand the part we cannot overload we can overload the constructor but we cannot inherit or we cannot override there is a concept of copy constructor which is used to initialize an object from another object so using the concept of copy constructor we can directly uh, replicate one object to an another object so that is the uh, use of copy constructor so basically constructor is used to initialize the memory to an object of a class without that or without calling any uh, constructor or without using any constructor the memory of the object will not be created until and unless we create an object so having the constructor without calling or creating any object we can allocate some memory to the class which will be as like a object by default also if you don't uh, manually don't uh, create any constructor by default the constructor is already created whenever you uh, create the or define the class name but manually we can declare the constructor having the same name as the class name and also we can give different constructor in the same class within the same class and we can give different types of arguments or different numbers of arguments to overload it or to use the overloading concept but we cannot inherit or we cannot override the constructor for another derived class so these are a basic idea of constructor the last one is actually the copy constructor which is used to copy the or replicate the whole uh, object of uh, object of one class to another object of the same class so this is simple syntax class name constructor body simple concept next one is destructor like the constructor destructor is also member function of a class that has the same name as the class name preceded by a tilde operator and it helps to deallocate so actually constructor allocate the memory of an object but destructor deallocates so it is called while the object of the class is freed or deleted so whenever you want to free the object of the class or delete the object of the class then you can call it in a class there is always a single destructor without any parameters so it cannot be overloaded so it is always called in reverse order of the constructor so if a class is inherited by another class and both class have the have a destructor then the destructor of the side class is called first followed by a destructor of the parent class or the base class so that is the a uh, way or a reverse order of calling the destructor so there are a few uh, basic differences between constructor and destructor so if you need this whole document i can provide you uh, please message me or uh, contact me i'll give it to you so thus uh, mainly i have gone through uh, data encapsulation concept uh, inheritance concept in polymorphism polymorphism nothing but the basic concept of uh, overloading and overriding that is the main idea of uh, polymorphism but there will be more uh, deep concept like uh, dynamic uh, dynamic or static kind of things are also there in case of polymorphism so try to go for more about this concept and also i have covered few things about frame class and uh, frame function and also going through various aspects of uh, oop and also 
uh, gone through the inheritance concept and also gone through basic idea about constructor and destructor so uh, i think this will help you to some extent but obviously uh, by doing one hour exercise on this will not be enough uh, so but uh, to prepare for the interview it might just give you some uh, uh, some help might be um, but uh, if you have any confusion or any uh, anything any more anything more to understand then please uh, contact me so that's it the, the uh, i would like to co conclude here thank you